Good morning everyone and I know it's the week before Christmas and the holidays and everyone's feeling a little bit sleepy and almost lethargic let's be honest um, but wake up people because I know it's still like in the range that New York close on Friday is a big warning it is I'm excited because I'm a bear and I've got to tell you that that was pretty bearish price action uh, that we saw on Friday in New York. Not because just of where the market closed on the day uh, and you can say, oh, it was down X percent or whatever. It's the nature of the price action within the day's trading where it was sold off, bought back up, sold off, bought back up, sold off to a new low, bought back up, sold off again, closed on the lows. That means there were a lot of buyers in the market, yet we kept getting sold down and there was no end of day rally. Look, Omicron is coming, but that's not why I'm bearish. Omicron is actually going to be huge. For all we know, everything, including Delta, was the equivalent of the first wave of the Spanish flu. And we know the second wave was the one that caused far bigger problems. Maybe Omicron is the start of the second wave. I do think, and most people think, that the illness is going to be more mild. But because of the sheer numbers, there will be hospitalizations, and that is what has everyone worried and concerned. So I don't think we're going to have lockdowns, but even the Prime Minister in Australia and people all around the world, they're talking about the potential for some sort of regional or city restrictions or community restrictions if things get out of control. Let's face it, if you end up with seven, 8,000 people in hospital, you're going to have some form of restrictions, even if it's not given the same name as a lockdown. So hopefully that doesn't happen because we don't want people to get sick, but it all comes back to personal responsibility, but back to markets. I'm not selling, I'm not bearish because of Omicron, I'm bearish because the world economy doesn't look good. Everyone keeps saying the US economy is strong, but it's actually gone up now. The number of people, the, the number that is below the previous employment level. So there's now about 5 million fewer people with paid employment in the United States, as everyone thinks they're going to be the next Elon Musk and goes out on their own and moves to regional centers, hence all the action in the, the housing data. I've got to say, it sort of links in with my holiday comments at the start. Everyone is way too relaxed right now or way too, I would say, optimistic about financial success because human beings respond to recency, frequency, and intensity. What's happened for the last two years? The ultimate trading strategy was discovered. It's called buy and close your eyes because it's just going to magically go up. And that's what's been happening. So basically, the less experience, the less knowledge you had about markets, investing, trading, the better you did over the last two years, well, certainly the last 18 months. Um, I think it could be a time for a bit of a sorting out. Markets clear themselves out from time to time of euphoria, of excess exuberance, as Greenspan called it. Um, and I think this could be one of those times, I've been warning about it before, I said on national television that the market was had topped in the last three to six hours uh, one morning a couple of weeks ago, and since then we haven't made new highs. Uh, and I said the Australian market had topped four months ago, and it's been going down for uh, well, three months now. Um, and, you know, been very bearish companies like Afterpay right from the top. So if you think it's still been a bull market, think again, a lot of things have been ringing loud, loud, loud warning bells that this market could be at a not short term, not even medium term, but a long term turning point. By long term, I mean one to three years, risk six. Um, if we have a big downside move, through these holidays, it's going to be difficult for the market to recover coming back in January, February. And if that happens, then it paints a rather gloomy picture for the rest of the years. Look at the boom in ETFs, but what are ETFs? Just get long everything. Okay, it's been a lot of share buybacks. There's still more share buybacks to do, but do they are they rational in terms of a company getting out and growing its market share uh, and investing productively in its own future? Probably not. They do help CEOs get their bonuses. 
That's what share buybacks do. Um, no coincidence, no, there's no connection there. That's purely a coincidence. Anyway, a lot of economic reasons. The US economy is not as strong as people say it is. Services sector is holding up well. Manufacturing industrial production are in trouble. Uh, in China, manufacturing industrial production are in trouble. In Germany, we are just seeing month after month, the data getting worse and worse and worse on consumer confidence, on invest confidence, business confidence, and services and manufacturing activity, and exports continuing to climb. There's still massive supply chain disruption. There's still massive price gouging, which is causing simultaneously inflation, inflation and earnings to go up, which means it's all going to eventually erode the power of the consumer and people are going to stop spending as much as they try to protect the nest eggs they have coming out of the pandemic. 2022 could very much be the year of people playing defense with what they've made or racing for the exit to keep what they've made. And that's what I'm concerned about. As the economic sort of below trend scenario I've been painting for some time settles in and people see it more and more in the economic data, that is, yes, we'll have positive growth, but it won't be as exciting as people thought, and it was certain, certainly, uh, and it will in fact be below trend of what we should really be seeing uh, in nations like Europe, uh, China, the United States. Remember, I forecast some weeks ago that the slowdown in China is a long-term permanent resetting of that economy lower. And as a major driver of global growth over the last 15 years, that's going to matter. So all these earnings priced in to the major stocks, the major brands of the world, they've priced in a 2021 we didn't get. They've priced in a 2022 we're not going to get. And it all starts to look a little bit shaky. And with a huge broad participation more than ever in the history of the world, which is always itself a historical precedent to a um, significant market correction, I think we should all be a little bit concerned. And I do not think this is a week where you go into the holidays and you leave all your chips on the table. I think you take a lot of your chips off the table and you even invest a few in strong defensive uh, protective strategies uh, in ver using various financial tools that are available in the market. You can aggressively take advantage of a market downside and your relative net worth by protecting yourself and then benefiting from the downside, your relative net worth will take off and skyrocket. Uh, and in the end, uh, that seems to be what the human uh, spe species is all about, relative net worth, competition urge, that sort of thing. So be aware that this could be a wonderful opportunity. I always say, you, you know, the source of happiness, it's not money. The source of happiness is making a contribution to those around you and your broad community, as is your circumstances. Contribution is the only way to be happy. My attempt here is to contribute to you by warning that that price action and the price action of the last couple of weeks is a real concern for the outlook for equities going into the holiday season and into the new year, which could snowball into a problem year ahead. Hope that helps. Oh, and on currencies, if this happens, there's still gonna be panic buying of the US dollar. US corporations are gonna repatriate more and more funds back home. The US dollar is going to again be firm. Gold will be firm. I'm liking it again more and more and more. Uh, the Australian dollar, uh, you know, my forecast for a long time now was 70 cents. We achieved that. And the next target was 65 cents. I think we will see that. The ultimate risk strategy for the Australian dollar is 58 cents. That is not out of the question, but it's probably a 2023 problem. Uh, 2022, we could well see 65 cents for the Australian dollar. We could even see it in the first quarter of next year. So there's a potential trading opportunity. I think the US dollar will be firm. I think there will be safe haven flows to the US dollar and to gold at the same time. So that'll be an interesting uh, trade-off there to, to keep an eye on. Thank you very much. I'm Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, AECY Securities, the exciting Australian company doing so well on the global stage. Thank you for listening in. Uh, I hope you'll listen in to my next show and I'll try and get these to you uh, as early as I can each day to make your day very exciting from the very beginning. Thank you very much. Have a great one.